everyone. Um, I'm back for my Facebook, Instagram, live and YouTube video this week. And today I wanted to talk about something a little bit more serious. And we've titled it Till Death Do Us Part. Because last week was a bit of an interesting week for me where two different people shared with me, or I heard from two different people, that they lost their partner, their spouses, to very, very um, sudden circumstances. And it was very, very sad to hear their stories. And in both cases, so it was interesting that they were literally two couple of days apart. And in both cases, it was very unexpected that their partner had left. And in one of the cases I was talking to the um, to to the to the woman who had lost her husband, and she's someone I've known since childhood, and I was really sad to hear from her like how it happened, and he was just he was traveling, and he was found deceased in the kitchen of where he was staying, and uh, and she and and he was is her soulmate, and. So to hear the stories from the people that are left behind, when you hear people say things like um, uh, that, I just don't know how to do life without him. I have, I feel I have no reason to be here. Um, I, I'm waiting for him to walk through the door. And so I can completely imagine, in fact, I can't, I can and I can't imagine how they feel. And and also things like um, they feel that um, I'm I'm done. I'm ready to cross over. There's no reason for me to keep going. Um, and so I, if I put myself in that position, I can't imagine doing life without Danny either. And so for me, I feel very very. Um, sad for them and I want to do everything I can and say whatever I can to support people who are going through that kind of a situation. And there's a couple of other points in relation to that that I would like to also uh, speak about. So one is that even if it, it feels really, really unexpected that your deceased loved one has passed away, I would like you to know that they are still okay on that side. Why do I say this? Why do I know this? It's because I know that I've, I've been there and I know that as soon as you cross that threshold, you no longer feel any pain or any fear. There's this thres threshold and your deceased loved ones are there to help you to cross that threshold. Even if you feel that your loved ones may linger for a while and you wonder, are they suffering? Are they struggling? Please know that their loved ones are there to help them cross. Even if they're lingering, they're not going to be lingering very long at all. But once they've crossed, it doesn't mean that they're not with you anymore. So this is the part I really want to clarify. And I'm going by how it felt for me when I was in that state. Um, so uh, also what I want to mention is that one of the people that lost their partner, so actually let me backtrack. The other thing I want to say is that no matter how much or how familiar you are with this kind of content, like I have died and come back and I'm not afraid of death. But for me, um, if I were to lose somebody I love, I would still be sad. I would still grieve. So if that's what you're feeling, feel it. Don't suppress it. Don't feel that, oh, I should be better than this, or, oh, I, I've learned all this stuff. I should get over it. And no, don't suppress it. Don't bypass your emotions. Honor them and take care of yourself and allow yourself the time that you need to grieve and to feel those emotions. They're real and take your time to heal. So the, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, uh, one of the two people shared with me that she went immediately in her grief, she went to see somebody who is a, um, a, a psychic reader. And this person said to her that because your spouse passed away so suddenly, he is... Um, he is stuck between the two realms because it was so sudden. And he is, um, 
and and he's not leaving because you are so grieving so much so you need to tell him go to the light go to the light now she didn't want him to go to the light so her heart couldn't embrace that and so she wasn't able to tell him go to the light so she became more stressed about the fact that um that she didn't want him to go because she wanted him to come back she wanted him to be with her and so she wasn't able to say go to the light and yet she felt guilty that she wasn't sending him to the light so she was worried she was doing something wrong so what i want to tell people is that if you are the one in grief please 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 don't worry that you are doing anything wrong no matter what you do it is not wrong what you need to do is do whatever you need to do for yourself to make yourself feel better if you need to hold on to your partner on the other side hold on to them that's okay because they are there for you even when they cross over you're not hindering them and even if you are and they can see that you're distressed they won't want to leave you and it's okay there's nothing wrong with that so it's not that the reader was wrong i don't want to make people wrong when they say that but there is a little bit of an interpretation going on there where some people interpret that if you haven't fully crossed over that you are trapped and we need to help you cross over i don't actually feel that way or interpret that he was correct in that her partner her uh, her husband was still there because he could feel that she needed him and he wanted to be there to support her and he was there and she could feel him there and but what i'm trying to say is that that's okay if that's what you need because if you're going to force yourself to push him away but you're going to be more stressed by doing that it's actually going to make it harder for that person to cross over it's actually going to be easier if you just embrace what you're feeling and say no i can't live without you right now and you're holding on to the feeling that he or she is still around they're fine with that they really are they are being embraced by their loved ones and even if the transition for them is gradual it's okay the other thing i want to say is that even when they have fully crossed over they will still come back and be with you you have not lost them i say this because i am guided till today by people that have crossed over years ago and when i was on that side they were fully crossed over and yet they were telling me that they were still guiding me like my dad my best friend and others who i didn't recognize when i was there but they had crossed over years ago but they were telling me that i was guiding you through your cancer journey so um so even if they fully crossed over fully embrace the fact that that i have passed on i am now here it doesn't mean they cut their ties with you so don't be afraid of that of them fully crossing over so that's the other thing they will continue to send you signs so one of the ladies that i was talking to last week the one um who was scared that she was hindering her husband um and i assured her she wasn't uh what happened is that she then so her favorite color is red and um uh, she used to always wear a lot of red clothes i re even remember when we were young she used to wear red dresses and red shoes and her and her song her husband and her song was lady in red anyway The other day what happened is that three red balloons randomly just blew across her driveway and uh and she told me that and she took that as a sign and I said yes that is absolutely a sign once they're able to they will start sending you signs so even though one of the um as you know many of you know the term is part of marriage vows is till death do us part in most cases if your partner was your soulmate and someone you loved and um even at death you don't actually part with them they continue to guide you and help you and they are not suffering and they want to help you now if if you've had a relationship with somebody that was tumultuous and it wasn't a good relationship 
I want you to know that when they cross over, they are aware of any suffering or pain they caused you. And they, um, they, once they cross over, they love you unconditionally. So they will no longer cause you suffering or pain from the other side. On the contrary, they will help you as far as they can, as much as they're capable and able. They want to help you. It's part of their own growth. If there is any unfinished business in terms of conversations or you feel that they left at a point in your relationship that left certain things hanging or you just had an argument and you're racked with guilt about not having said I love you enough times or you're having regrets that you wish you had said certain things, it's not too late. They're still there. They're still there so you can continue to communicate with them and tell them, I want you to know that I really, really love you. I am so sorry I did this or I wish I had done that. And release it from yourself. Heal yourself by talking to them and going to whatever um, therapies and grief counseling that you need. If any of you are going through grief right now and have lost loved ones and partners, I highly recommend a wonderful grief counselor who, who has online groups. His name is David Kessler. We're going to tag him on this. I'm going to put a link to his web, website. I believe his website is something like uh, grief.com. Anyway, um, we're going to put a link to his website. Uh, please look him up, David Kessler wonderful grief counselor, personal friend of mine. You can tell him you found him through my, um, through my video, but I highly recommend his, his groups. Um, the other thing I want to say is that if you start to find joy in life again, or even if you find another partner, then um, please do not feel guilty. A lot of people feel that. They feel that they should only love that person. Of course, for a long time, you will not even uh, you will not even want to find someone else, or for whatever time that it takes you. But if you start to develop a relationship with somebody else, another partner, um, do not feel guilty because they want you to be happy, and chances are they might have even led you to this other person. Unbeknownst to you, they might have led you to somebody else. So I actually want to share with you a little story of another friend of mine. Um, he was with his wonderful spouse and partner for about 30 years, and they were soulmates. He couldn't imagine being with anybody else, and she... Um, passed away after, I think it was over 30 years of being together. And I remember at the time that happened, he felt he was done with life. He, he, he was waiting for her to come in through the door or he would come home expecting to see her there and she wasn't there. It took him a long time. And he said that if I were to leave now, I'd be fine. I'm done. I don't even know what to do when I get up in the mornings. I don't know what to do with my day. And he was really, really distraught. And I saw him go through this for quite a few weeks, months, and sometimes he'd have good days and sometimes bad days. And, and this is the other piece I want to tell you is you need to do whatever you need to do for yourself to heal yourself. There is no time scale that you should do this. You need to go at whatever time works for you. So, and, and don't beat yourself up if sometimes you have, if you have a series of good days and then you have a bad day, because sometimes healing is not linear. Something might trigger your memory and it's okay. So anyway, with this friend, what happened is over a period of time, there was um, this lovely lady that would check in on him. And she was very caring and she would check in on him and then she would bring him food and soups and then she would sit and she would uh, sometimes spend time with him and they would start to talk. And then they soon found they had things in common. And although it took some time, they then started to get closer to each other. And then they discovered something that they have in common. They both love traveling. They both love road trips. 
And so they decided to do a road trip together and they realized that they travel really, really well together. One road trip led to another and then that led to them living together. And now they, they plan to spend the rest of their lives together and they can't imagine being with anyone else for this part of their lives, for the rest of their lives. Here's what's really interesting. Um, his previous spouse who had passed away, even though they were soulmates, the one thing that she hated more than anything was traveling or going on road trips. She absolutely hated traveling. Um, and the one thing that he wished about her, if he could change anything about her, was that he wished she would travel more because she loved animals and she had animals and she had horses and cats and she just couldn't bear it when she would leave them. When she was away from them, her heart was always there at home with them and she would just long to go back home. And he just loved the adventure of the road and he loved going to different countries and learning about different cultures. And that was the one thing he missed when he was with her. And although he would go off and do it sometimes on his own, nothing would have made him happier than if his partner, if his spouse did that with him. So here he was now spending the rest of his life with this, with this wonderful lady who couldn't get enough of traveling. So, so now, um, so, so he and his new partner, they were on the road and they were traveling and they were taking flights and, and she was the best travel partner he could ever wish for. One day we were talking, I was talking to him and I said to him, I think your previous partner actually brought her to you because this was the one thing that she couldn't give you while she was here. And now from the other side, this was the gift that she wanted to give you. And he said, you know, I actually think you're right. Because of the string of synchronicities that brought this partner to him would not have been possible had it not been for the fact that she was part of his life due to the connections that came through. And he said, I think you're absolutely right. Even I felt it was her that brought my new partner into my life. So this is what I mean about them helping, um, helping us when we, uh, when, when we cross over. They actually give us what they couldn't give us when we were in physical life. And the big thing that I want to leave you with is do not worry about your deceased loved ones. Take care of yourself. If you need them and if you need to talk to them, talk to them. You're not keeping them from anything. Do whatever you need to do for yourself because that is what will make them happy. Seeing you happy is what will make them happy. If you worry about them, that actually puts a burden on them. So please, please, please always take care of yourself. When we do ceremonies here, it's to bring closure to us. It's really to bring closure to us. And again, I don't want to undermine ceremonies and I don't want to undermine cultural ceremonies for the deceased loved ones. What I believe it is, it's to show our loved ones how much we love them, how much we miss them. Ceremony does a lot of good. It does a lot of good for us. But if you don't wish to do ceremony, that's okay too. You're not holding anyone back. I remember my mom, when my dad passed away, she wanted to do as little as possible. It was just, it just made her... Um, more anxious and stressed out to have to do all the, the 12 days of, uh, of the ritual and the ceremony that our Hindu culture requires. She didn't want to do that, but she was um, guilted into doing it by our culture, our cultural paradigm and and the, and, the, and the holy men of our culture. She was made to feel that she would not be doing best for her loved one, and it would mean she doesn't love him enough and doesn't want him to go where he needs to go. It was only when I died did I realize we're not doing these things for them. We're doing it for two reasons, either to bring closure to us 
or out of guilt and compliance of our cultural paradigm. So I'd like, you to, I'd like to leave you with that. And I'd like you to also, if you are going through grief and you're struggling with it, please call on David Kessler. Please write it to him through his website. And I want you to know that your loved ones are with you. They're not going to leave you. And you're not getting in the way of anything when you talk to them and you call on them. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you next week. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you want more information like this, please, please hit like on the video. Please subscribe to my channels. Um, please follow me. And I will see you really soon. Thanks again and bye.